Welcome to the Arlington Catholic Herald podcast. This is staff writer Zoe Murray, and I'm here today to talk about Marion Holmes. Here with me is a member of Marion Holmes, Walter Purdy. He's also a Knight of Columbus from Council 8600 out of St. Mary of Sorrows Church in Fairfax. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Zoe, for having us. Well, let's start with the basics. What is Marion Holmes? How did it start? Well, Marion Holmes was started by a group of knights from Council 8600. In 1996, they incorporated Marion Holmes as a nonprofit, all volunteer group. And what we do is we go out, we raise money to buy and maintain homes, group homes, for the intellectually disabled. We're so thrilled. We just had the grand opening for our sixth home, which is in Springfield. Yeah. And one of the things that we're happy and thrilled about is that now five more individuals will have a home of their own uh, that they'll have forever. And what's the need for homes like this in this area? Well, in Northern Virginia, it's a huge need. There's over 1,000 people on a list today that do not have a home to go to. When the Northern Virginia Training Center shut down off of Braddock Road a couple years back, uh, it left a huge void. Uh, Individuals either had to go to an institution in Southern Virginia where their families would then have to travel over great distances to visit them, or they had to try to find uh, additional housing, which is not available in Northern Virginia. Okay, and what's what's been the process to to buy a home and refurbish it and all of that? Well, one of the things, we're lucky, we have a realtor that's a member of the Knights of Columbus, and what he does is initially he goes out and he identifies homes because in Northern Virginia, it seems everybody's building bigger and three-story colonials. One of the things that we need is a home on a single floor Mm -hmm. because at some point, these individuals may be in wheelchairs today or in the future. The second thing then, we have to go and kind of see how we're gonna raise the money uh, to buy the home. And we've been very fortunate with our fundraising efforts, grants from other nonprofits, in working with Fairfax County uh, in their community block development grants that they have. Once we kind of identify the home, usually we have a group of usually 30 to 40 nights from various councils, St. John Newman, St. Mark, St. Leo's, and all these nights come together and volunteer hundreds of hours doing the demolition and some of the things that we can do. Uh, And then we've always hired a a contractor uh, to do the things that we just don't have the time nor the skill set readily available. And for this last home, I'm really pleased that a group, Hansel Phelps, uh, was, uh, you know, selected and they did such a superb job in the home. Yeah, it's it's beautiful. I was at the the grand opening and saw five bedrooms and nice big bathrooms and then... um, Uh, an office for the Chimes staff. Can you tell me about Chimes? Yeah, Chimes is a great uh, nonprofit organization. And what they do is they provide the 24-hour care for the residents of our homes. Uh, Chimes of Virginia, uh, they are just a great organization. And so they staff the home 24 hours a day. Uh, and they also have programs for the residents. So it's not just the caring of them in, while they're in the home, but also those additional programs that support those individuals with intellectual disabilities. There's a new home for five men now in Springfield, but you guys are always looking ahead, and hopefully you're going to have a new house next year. Is that right? Uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> Father Barquette, our pastor at St. Mary's of Sorrows Church, the first question he always asks is, so when are you getting the next house? <laughs> and uh, so we try to, we've already got a committee looking and trying to identify a residence that would be suitable for us to go in and renovate and that would meet the needs Uh, for five more individuals. So the paint's not even dry, but uh, it keeps on going. (laughs) And it keeps, and it's a constant thing. You know, it's not just um, opening up a a home. You know, we still have to maintain the homes. And one of the things, our mantra is really, we want these homes to be 
as nice or if not better so that we all would want to live in these homes mm -hmm. and I, I think I can say that we've done that with every home uh, since I've been a part of Marion Homes. And if people want to learn more is there a website they can go to? Or? Uh, yes uh, we have a website marionhomes.org we're always looking for support donations and prayers because we need all three things. Wonderful and and kind of on a personal level, why um, why does this matter to you? What have you liked about being well, part of it? Well, one of the things I like is when you see the individual residents when they first come in, uh, as you probably saw on mm -hmm. Saturday, uh, we had some residents, they were very proud that this was their bedroom. Mm-hmm, yeah. Uh, and they wanted everybody to know that this is my home, this is my bedroom. They get to decorate those rooms. We have in one of our homes uh, an individual who's decorated it with a baseball theme. And every time, I always have to make sure when I go to that home, I put on my Red Sox hat. <laughs> uh, and as soon as he sees that, that's like a cue for him. He knows who I am, and <laughs> he's all excited to tell me about his team, the Baltimore Orioles. <laughs> uh, in this last home, the Queen of Hope house in, in Springfield, we have an individual. I think he was telling everybody he's going to decorate his home uh, with red skin uh, fin paraphernalia and yeah. and lots of things. So that's a great thing when they feel this is their home. And that's how we feel about these homes. These are their homes to live in forever. And that's why I, at the end of the day, uh, if we can all just do something small for somebody else in need and make uh, somebody else's life just a little bit better, then this world would be a much greater place. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for being here, Walter. Well, thank you, Zoe, for having us. And we look forward to seeing you at the seventh home. <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks to Mary Stakira Lopez for producing this podcast. And thanks for listening. Mm -hmm.